Joining us now, a team of the best in the business. Dan Balls is the chief correspondent for The Washington Post. Gwen Eiffel is the host of Washington Week and the senior correspondent for PBS NewsHour. And John Dickerson is our own CBS News political analyst. Thank you all so much for being here. John, um, wow, the race for the Republican nomination is on. We have breaking news this morning, and we've got a different landscape. That's right. You know, the, the Republican race has been on a bit of a slow roll for now. And then in the last 24 hours, bang, we have one candidate jumping in, Governor Perry. One drops out, Tim Pawlenty. And we now have a front runner in Iowa, Michelle Bachman. So now the question, and that's the new pace. And we have a new top tier. And it's Perry, Mitt Romney, and Bachman. And the question now will be the one that was debated here in Iowa, which is which candidate can best express those Tea Party values. The Tea Party is the animating force in Republican politics, and w but which candidate can get elected in the general election? That's the key question for the months ahead. And Gwen, what about that? We're going to see Governor Perry here in Waterloo, Iowa. Michelle Bachman switched her schedule around to go to Waterloo uh, as well, defend her home No fool she. Yes. <laughs> what does it say about uh, the Republican Party now, the fact that Tim Pawlenty couldn't ignite uh, any excitement? You know, in past campaigns, we've always seen the Republicans eventually flock around the presumed leader. Uh, we, that's why we've been paying so much attention to Mitt Romney, who completely dropped off the face of the earth in the discussion yesterday. But one of the things that we're seeing this time is the debate is, be, is between, at least for now, until Mitt Romney finds a way to elbow his way back in, between Tim Perry, Tim Perry, Jack Perry, Jack, <laughs> Rick Governor Rick Perry. Perry. <laughs> Governor Perry. They're and, all interchangeable and like Legos. Yeah. Congresswoman Bachman. But the reason is because they're fighting for just their base. And that's what the, the Democrats and, and Debbie Wasserman Schultz are hoping they'll do, fight for the Tea Party while they're trying to still go to the middle. And we don't know whether either one of them is capable or even wants to at this stage begin to do that. Dan, Gwen makes an excellent point about Mitt Romney. And I can show you one of the papers today, the Boston Herald, and says that uh, you know Rick Perry is Mitt Romney's worst nightmare. Is there some truth to that? There is some truth to that. I mean, Governor Perry comes from a very big and important state. Uh, he's been the governor of that state for a decade, longer than anybody in the history of Texas. Uh, he has a record he can talk about on job creation. The question about Rick Perry that is unanswerable at this point is what kind of a candidate he'll be on the national stage. He's been a very effective candidate in Texas, but we don't know when somebody steps out of that comfort zone that he's so familiar with and onto something that is totally different, how he's going to perform. Well, we're going to see how he's going to perform, right, John? Because we've got three debates in September for the Republican candidates. That's right. He, he got three debates, and he, the expectations are very high. With We've never really had a Superman candidate swoop in and take over the field. History is really uh, uh, littered with candidates who came in and weren't w what was expected. So he'll have to perform in those three debates. He'll have to just perform in the small rooms of Iowa and New Hampshire, much different s stage than in Texas. And he's going to have lots of investigative reporters going down to Texas. He'll have to be fighting off those stories about his terms in office while he's trying to actually mount a campaign. That's a tough juggling act. Here's the huge advantage for Governor Perry. I was talking to a lot of voters yesterday at the Iowa straw poll, and of course they are your most committed, most engaged. But even the ones who are voting for also rands, at least for the purposes of, of the straw poll, like Rick Santor, and people who were speaking only specifically about social conservative issues, they were saying, you know, I like my guy, but I really want somebody to beat President Obama. And they are so animated to oust President Obama that he may be able to make the case that I'm best able to do that, no matter how exciting the other people say. I ran into that sentiment in the Bachman tent. Yes. A couple there who said, you know, if Perry was here, we might be in his tent. So you think that some of the Bachman people could actually uh, uh, be interested in Governor Perry? If he performs, and that's Dan's point, which is that he's got a lot of hurdles to jump over, and he's got to show that he can do this balancing act, talk to the Tea Party, but also show that he's a viable general and I election think, I think Governor Romney is going to try to make the case that he has a greater ability to reach to the key voters in a general election, that he can do better in the Midwest, for example, or these upper Midwest states than Rick Perry. Rick Perry has been terrific at appealing to a conservative base in Texas, but he hasn't had to deal with independents down there. And President Obama is beginning his first bus tour of his presidency here in the Midwest, uh, Minnesota, Iowa, Illinois. He will be here in Iowa at the same time as Governor Rick Perry. We're going to have sort of a debate of sorts uh, on Monday, a different visions on the economy by President Obama and Governor uh, Rick Perry. Because no matter what you think about the straw poll and whether it was 
predictive and whether, no matter what you think about the caucuses and whether they're predictive, it should be pointed out that the last person to actually get elected president to win a straw poll was, was George W. Bush. So it's not necessarily predicting the next president, but it means that Iowa is going to be a battleground state. President mm -hmm. Obama won it in 2008, but it's up for grabs this And Dan, time. how vulnerable is President Obama on the economy and other issues? Well, if you just go by the numbers, Nora, he's very vulnerable. I mean, 9.1% unemployment, growth at under 2%. We go back to the Reagan example from 1983 and 84. He had high unemployment and he had low approval ratings. But he had growth numbers at this point in 1983 that were so far above what uh, anybody expects coming out. He was in the 8 and 9 percent growth in, in the economy at that point. That gave a sense of a lift. President Obama doesn't have that to look forward to. And so he's going to have a very difficult time. So how does he get out of it? Prayer. And also... <laughs> He hopes, He'll be calling Governor Perry for that. And he hopes that Governor Perry perhaps is the nominee and he can run against this idea that, oh, another Texan. And also the president will then be able to run against another candidate, spend all those millions he's raising against one person rather than having to defend his record all the time. He hopes, of course, to change that conversation. But Nora, he has to switch up because so far all the Democratic campaign at Bayer has been dedicated to Governor Romney. They've been, they've been thinking that eventually the Republicans will come home and this will be our real, uh, our real opponent. Now, Governor Perry throws a complete, you know, spanner into the works. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Thanks to a fabulous roundtable. Great to have all of you. Dan Balls, Gwen Eiffel, John Dickerson. Thanks so much.